Come on. Uh, church family, God's put us here not just for ourselves, but to reach somebody else. And, and the hope that we've received to share that with somebody else. And some of you are really good at this, and some of you need to get good at this, all right? And um, your favorite Sunday could be in two weeks. And how it'll be your favorite Sunday is the person that you invited over these next two weeks showed up, and they're sitting next to you, and Davey shares and ministers, and at the end, maybe says, hey, if you'd like to know the Lord yourself, just raise your hand, and you close one eye, you know, and you pray with one eye open, and I think the Lord will be okay with that, and, and you watch their hand go in the air. That will be your favorite Sunday at Crossroads Church, all right? So let's do it over the next two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, November 3rd. All right, today we're concluding a series that we've been in for several weeks. I call it Yafi. It's You Asked For It, okay? So uh, the Yafi series, if you're into that. And uh, today we're wrapping it, wrapping it up and talking about marriage and relationships and things like that. Uh, bring this picture up on the screen for me. Maybe you guys, how many remember this? I found out this was written, published in 1930. So a lot of people have read it. But this is that little engine that could. Uh, it, it's the one that said, you know, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And... Um, so much, and I share this and start this message with this because the Bible says, as a person thinks, so they are. So your thoughts are powerful. If you think you can do it, there's a way better chance that you will than if you think, I can't do it. I'll never finish high school, I'll never get my degree. I'll never get married. I'll never have. What, what are you telling yourself? And specifically today, what are you telling yourself in relationships? What are you telling yourself in your marriage, perhaps? What, what, what's going on in your life? Are you thinking we're not going to make it? Or this isn't what I thought it would be? Or I, I don't know that I'll ever have happiness in my life. What are you saying to yourself? And why this is important is because Jesus talked about there's a liar on the loose. There's a liar on the loose. And in John chapter 8, verse 44, here's, here's what Jesus said about him. He said, the devil was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he's speaking his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. There are lies out there. And I want to say that marriage is under attack in our country especially. And there are marriage lies that you can believe. And here's what Jesus, though, said about himself. In John chapter 8, verse 32, he says this, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So here, here's what I want to have happen today, is for the enemy's lies to be turned down in your life and the truth of God to be turned up in your life. Does that sound good? I believe God can do that in our lives today. So let's pray right now. Father, open our hearts to receive what you have for us. Get our minds open, our spirits ready so that we can hear your voice. And Holy Spirit, use us over the next two weeks especially there are people that need you, Lord, and they're right around us. 
And so help us to live the next two weeks especially sensitive so that we can know who we need to invite. Who could be touched by Davy's story and their life will never be the same again. So God, use us as an instrument. Use this church, Lord, to change this community. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, singles, don't think this isn't for you. This is maybe more for you than even the married people, all right? So take some notes today and get ready. And I also want to promote something else one, right before we jump into this first lie, and that is the parenting conference that we have coming up. It's just, just a few weeks away. And uh, you need to make sure you go to this because I, I'm not going to talk about parenting today, but I'm just telling you, poor Parenting is abundant. <laughs> and um, poor parenting can lead to marriage problems. Because when the five year olds run in the house, come on, somebody, <laughs> it's upside down. And uh, you, you need to, and how many of us, nobody here said, I want to be the worst parent I can possibly be, you know? <laughs> no, nobody says that. But some of us didn't have good examples. And we didn't have good upbringing. We didn't have good teaching. We didn't know what to do. And so this parenting seminar can help you and can help somebody else. So make sure you come and you invite somebody because it'll help your marriage as well. And it'll sure help your kids. And it'll help your mental well-being. All right? So be here. All right, here's the first lie. Marriage lies we're talking about today. And the first one, the enemy wants to tell us he's a liar. And he'll give us this lie. Is the change lie. Okay? And here's how the change lie goes. I will change him. <laughs> or I will change her. And here's what someone said. Uh, bring this up on the screen. Ma men marry women hoping they won't change. Women marry men hoping they will change. And inevitably, both are disappointed. <laughs> someone said it like this. When you're dating, opposites attract you get married and opposites attack. In other words, what used to be cute isn't cute anymore. Mr. Perfectly Flexible is all of a sudden Mr. Doesn't ever get anything done. Or Miss Strong and Confident is now Mrs. Controlling and Nagging. And sometimes these things come out of hurt places or disappointment where maybe you, see, you say, I wish he'd make me his priority. I know I'm not his priority. I just wish I was. Or, or I wish she wouldn't put the kids in front of us. Or I wish she didn't drink so much, or I wish he would control his anger. You know, we, we maybe are here today and you think something's got to change. Something's got to change. And, and here's what can happen when we, we want change is we resort to criticism. We begin to criticize, we begin to nag, we begin to cry, and here, here's the problem with all those things. They don't bring change. And, and here's what I want to help you to know today. Only God can change a heart. Okay, you can't change your husband. You, you can't change your wife. You can't change anybody. Only God can change a heart. And I want to help you today. I want to give you resources. I want to help you to know what the Scripture says that brings about change. That there's something, and, and you should know what this is if you've read the Bible much at all. You, you should have picked up on this, that what can bring about change more than anything else 
is prayer. Prayer. There is power in prayer. When we pray, things can change. And so what you gotta do is, is start praying for change to happen. Maybe change, change in your spouse to happen. And here's what it says in James chapter five, verse 16. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and what? Effective. It has an effective work. It, it does something when people pray. Uh, one of the things I love about Rochelle is she loves to pray. She loves it when other people pray. And, and so she looks forward to, one of her highlights, two of her highlights of the year are the 21 days of prayer. Because then she knows, not only am I gonna be praying during this 21 days, but this whole church is gonna be praying as well. And, and there's power when people pray. And some of you, though, you might say, well, uh, Craig, I've been praying. I've been praying. But here, here's what I wanna say. okay. But don't stop praying, okay? Just because you prayed for 21 days, just because you've prayed for a while, you, you make sure you keep on praying. You keep on consistently and persistently praying and believing and trusting because we're in a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, and so you just gotta keep believing, keep trusting, and, uh, and I know that's hard, but here's what you don't do, or here, here's what you need to do. Let me say it this way, and put this up on the screen. Stop complaining, start praying. Okay? Stop complaining. Complaining's not gonna change it. But there's something about prayer. Come on, somebody. There's something about prayer. When, when you get to praying, when you get to trusting God, when you get to believing God, when you, when you get a hold of God and you're believing and trusting him and, and, and just bombarding heaven, let me tell you something. Maybe your spouse doesn't change, but I'll tell you what, you'll change because you can't help but change when you're in the Lord's presence. Can I get a good Amen. Right? Well, I mean, when you're in God's presence, prayer will change you. And, and I know that's difficult to hear if you're saying, oh, but it's my spouse that needs to change. And you're struggling. But here, here's what else I want to say. If you want a better marriage, start by making a better you. You know, you, again, you can't control them, but you can control you. And here's what Psalm 139, and I love this psalm. It's so powerful. We're gonna come back to this in January. Um, here's what it says. Search me. This would be a great prayer to wake up and pray every morning. Search me, God, and know my heart. Now, notice it didn't say my wife's heart or my husband. It says my heart. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And, and so what we've got to do is say, hey, 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 Lord, what do you want to do in me today? Because here's what God might do. He might just change your attitude. He might change your outlook. He might change what words you're using so that you're less critical so that you're less controlling, so that you have a better approach to your spouse, so that you forgive something that maybe you said you forgave, but you really didn't let go of it. And, and so maybe he, he works in you and does a work of healing or he builds your faith to trust him for the impossible. I, I know in our lives, in Rochelle and I, in our married life, one of the things that she's wanted for me to be is more assertive. And the reason why I'm not more assertive is because I want you to like me, okay? And it's a problem because I really want you to like me. 
And, and what she wants is for me to stand up and say and do and things like that. And, and so she's tried complaining. She's tried encouraging. She's tried suggesting things. She's hinted things. But I, I believe that nothing like prayer, and I think some of her prayers are, are starting to have an effect because recently she has said, okay, that's a little too much. <laughs> like, like that was over the line there. That was, that was kind of almost abrasive uh, when you said that. And what happens is, is when people pray, God begins to move. So maybe you're, you're like wishing, hoping your husband would discipline your kids more. You know, why do I have to be the one to discipline the kids? And, and so instead of complaining, pray about it. You know, or if you want your husband to disciple the kids. I wish my husband was a spiritual leader of our home. I wish he'd pray out loud. I wish he'd do something. Pray about it. Don't complain about it. You know, if you want them to be more respectful, Lord, I wish my wife was more respectful when she comes in. The home. Well, pray about it. Ask God to move in your situation. Listen, here's the thing. We don't complain first. We pray first, right? We pray first. All right, now here's the second lie. And this is a big one, is Marriage is give and take. <clears throat> marriage is give and take. Or people say it like this. Well, you know, a good marriage is 50-50. And I want to say, that is a lie from the pit. <laughs> All right? That, it, it sounds good, though. Sounds like, well, yeah. Sounds right. But it's dangerous, because think about it. Put this on the screen. Half-hearted effort, half-hearted commitment equals whole-hearted disappointment. See, when I'm just giving 50% and I'm expecting 50%, it's not going to work. And what happens is, is then what we often do in marriage is then we'll form columns, and, and here's my column, and here's your column, and it looks like I've got more going on in my column. So what happens is, is we keep score. And the moment you keep score, you both lose. Because marriage is not 50-50, it's 100%, 100%. If you read about it in the Bible, and, and <clears throat> by the way, God invented marriage. Does everybody know that? God, you know, men didn't sit around in a room and men and women or whatever and figure this out or whatever. No, God said a man will leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife, and there'll be one flesh. There it is. Okay, so it's God's idea. And, and here's what God says about it. It should be sacrificial it should be sacrificial giving, not expecting anything in return. Where is that? Ephesians chapter five, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And what did he do? He gave himself up for her. See, Jesus said it this way. He says, I didn't come to be given to, I came to give. And what would happen if you do that in your marriage relationship? And, and so, you know, you're, you're like, well, I wonder what my spouse needs right now. And I'll tell you, I've not always been good at this at all. As a matter of fact, in the early years of our marriage, uh, in particular, uh, if you were to ask me, you know, uh, what's your priorities? And think, well, God and my wife and then the church but really, that wasn't how it went. Because <laughs> really what it was is God, the church, and my wife. And so what would happen is, you know, hey, can we take a weekend off and do this or whatever? No, I can't be gone. And, and I mean, up until we, 
in the early years of our marriage, even starting this church, then it kind of almost got worse again because in the early years of this church, I thought I could only be gone one or two weeks because one other thing that would happen is I would be gone and then somebody would speak and people say, I hated it. <laughs> Don't let that guy speak again, please. You know, and, and so I thought, oh my gosh, I can't be gone. I have got to be here all the time. And this church relies on me. I, I've got to be here. And listen, that was a lie I was believing. And it wasn't putting my wife, what, what it should be is God first, my wife next, and then the church. And I kind of had to learn that. And now what I have to do is I have to make up for all those jacked up years that I had, okay? So I have to, I try to be gone as often as I can. Because I'm making up for lost time. And, and here's the thing. Let me, let me tell you something, church. If you think, if you think, well, I heard Pastor Craig's not going to be there this Sunday, so I'm not going to go. Let me tell you something. That's jacked up. Because you're following a man. And you should never be following a man. You should be following God. You should be in love with God and in love with God's church and say, you know what? I love my church. The Holy Spirit's in my church. It doesn't make any difference who's standing behind the pulpit. The Holy Spirit's gonna be there and God's gonna have a word for me. Are you getting this, church? You need to get this. And, and so it doesn't, and listen, I bring people in that I think are better than I am a lot of times. And, and, and so you need to just come and say, it doesn't matter. It's not about the person up there. It's about Jesus. It's about God working in my life. It's about the camaraderie of the church getting together and worship God and loving God and God filling the place with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. I'm about to get excited up here because that's what it's really all about. And so God can speak to you. So where do you need to grow? I told you where I needed to grow. Where do you need to grow? And, and let me ask you two questions here. These are powerful. What would happen if you both gave 100%? What would happen? And the next question is, what will happen if you don't? And so meditate on that. All right, that's a little heavy. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here's the next one is not only change life, not only is marriage, you know, 50-50 and, and give and take, but also the what about it's not a big deal. That's a big one. It's not a big deal, so I do this on the side. Nobody knows about it. It's not hurting anybody. You know, it, it's okay. You know, as long as... You know, I, I think things are going fine and everything. She doesn't need to know or he doesn't need to know. Nobody knows. It's not a big deal. And I just want to say that rarely do marriages blow up overnight. Rarely. Usually, it's a small problem that got started somewhere and it just grew and grew and grew. And developed. Very few pro problems that are big. It's mostly a small problem that went unchecked, unconfessed, and began to grow and compound. Now, let me say it this way. Sin grows best in the dark. When you keep it hidden. And there's a love story in the Bible, the Song of Songs or Song of Solomon. Uh, I grew up here in Song of Solomon. But uh, I don't know if you've ever read this book that's in your Bible, but if you think the Bible's boring, you haven't read the Song of Solomon, all right? You haven't read the Song of Songs. 
and, and I think we're all adults in here. All the kids are in the kids' department. And, and so uh, just, just whenever you want to heat things up, just get out the Song of Solomon, all right? And uh, he, he knew how to do it. But here's what it was. Solomon, and, and let me just give you a quick background. This Shulamite woman, uh, they were in love. And they just spoke passionately to each other. And, and it's a beautiful love story that you see there. And, and then in the midst of it, here's what the wise man Solomon wrote in Song of Solomon or Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15. Foxes attack at night. Here, watch this. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in full bloom. And here's what he's saying. He says, hey, we had this awesome wedding. The string lights were going everywhere. The barn was beautiful. And um, it didn't rain, and we had the outdoor thing. The pictures turned out great. You know, caterer was awesome and all. But then year one, or year two, or maybe for you it was year five, or whatever. He says the little foxes came in. You know, and, and they were cute. At first, it wasn't a big deal. And they just looked like they're nibbling. But, but here's the thing about these foxes, if you study them. They don't just eat what they can see. They dig down and eat the roots. And they'll totally destroy the vineyard if you don't do something. And Solomon is saying, hey, you, you think you're getting away with this. You think that nobody's watching, it's not impacting anybody, and so therefore it's okay to have these lustful thoughts, to look at these lustful images on my screen, to have, or to have a critical spirit. And, and you know, I, I just tell it like it is. No, you have a critical spirit. Or, or maybe secret spending, you know, I... I uh, it's okay if he doesn't know or she doesn't know or secret addictions that maybe you have and, and nobody knows about it or, you know, I'm on Facebook and, you know, I think I'll just look up that old flame, see what's going on in her life so I can pray for her. You know, that's, that's what I want to do, just want to intercede for them, you know? no. A lot of times what people will say is, well, I'm managing my sin. And here's what I want to say to you. You don't manage sin, you confess it. That's what the scripture says. Look at this. In James chapter 5, verse 16, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. Like Solomon said, you unite together. Jesus said, you agree together in prayer and anything can happen as you pray in agreement. Two people can catch a fox a whole lot easier than one. And when you're both working together and praying one for another, all of a sudden you're able to Catch those things. And, and let me just say, when that person comes forward and says, I need help, then be receptive to that. I just got a text from a pastor, a fellow pastor, a young guy. And he's starting out in ministry, and he was asking yesterday, I think it was, um, you know, I've got a couple. He was caught, he's been habitual in pornography now for a long time and, and it's getting ready to wreck their marriage. And so what should I do? And one of the things I texted back is I said, well, he needs help. He needs to get real with it. it, it it's not okay to just say, oh, honey, I, I'll, I'll never do that again. No, you need to get free of it. 
And the way you get free of it is you confess it and you get it out there. And listen, we have men's groups in this church where you can confess one to another and say, hey, dude, I was there a few years ago and God set me free and I'm gonna believe with you. I'll be your accountability partner. We'll we'll do what it takes to make sure that you're free and you stay free for the rest of your life. Yeah. That, that's what you do. So you gotta, you gotta get rid of the little foxes. And here's the, here's the last lie. And, and this fourth one, this one, mm, it, it, it can do some damage. And not just in marriage, but really all over the place. And here's the fourth lie, is the lie that it's hopeless. See, if you have cancer even, and you just say, well, it's hopeless. Well, that's it. That's it. If you give up, let me tell you something. It is probably over. But if you trust a God who can do the impossible, who can make anything happen, who even has the power to, listen, raise the dead. He's done it more than once. And he can do anything as we allow him to. Listen, it's not hopeless. But I know that's tough to hear when you're going through something and maybe when I'm up here and you say, oh, that's beautiful, Craig. I'm so happy for you. You know, yay, PC, You got this beautiful, awesome, foxy, gorgeous wife. Yes, I'm scoring points right now, okay? Because I have the microphone, all right? So don't judge me. But, uh, you know, and and you may think, well, that that is easy for you to say. And listen, here's what I want to say right now. I am not discounting the pain that might be in this room right now. The hurt, the heartache, the addiction, the betrayal, and the abuse, perhaps, that you have suffered. And I also want to say that if you are suffering abuse, and I'm speaking especially about physical abuse, and other kinds of severe abuse, I want to say to you that we support a home in Hendricks County that's a ministry for those who are suffering in abusive relationships. And I just want to say, if that is you, you do not have to stay there. If you're here today, just act like you're going to the restroom a little bit later, but come talk to me or somebody else and say, I'm one of the, I need out, I need help, and we will help you to get out of that situation. Don't stay there. You don't have to. You don't have to stay there. But here's here's the problem with this one, is that there can be some truth to it. See, and that's the most dangerous lie, isn't it? When it's like got some truth there. There's a little bit of truth there. It makes it easier to believe. And so when we say there's no hope in our marriage, there could be some truth there because, again, you can't make the other person do what you want them to do. So you may want to reconcile, but they don't. Or you may forgive and let go, but they don't. Or or maybe, you know, there's not been enough change shown that trust is there again. And and so therefore, it's hard. And it takes two to restore a broken marriage. And and so what you've got to be careful of, if that other person is that person, what you've got to watch for is not being self-righteous. Okay, like I'm the holy one. I, I pray, I, I want him to straighten out and whatever, but, you know, you can't make them, you know, and you, you act like you're all that and whatever. No, you don't get prideful and self-righteous. That's not going to help anybody. That's not going to help your relationship. 
What you know is the devil is a liar. That with God, there is always hope. He can make the impossible possible. Let me read it to you. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, Jesus said it himself. With God, all things are possible, no matter how bad it gets. And I just want to say, I have seen it with my own eyes. I, I know couples personally that when they divorced, I said, that's done. <laughs> that's where my faith was. And then over time, I watched God supernaturally work and those two get together again and my mouth is wide open. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. But God is able. Can I get a good amen there? He is able. He can do anything. Now, what about all this? Where do you go from here? Well, the first thing is you need to identify the lies that you may be believing. You know, are, are you believing one of these that we talked about? And if you are, here's what's important is that you replace it with the truth. You say, okay, now the devil has this lie, but I'm gonna replace it with God's truth in my life. And so what I've gotta do is I've gotta know God's word because his word is truth. So I've gotta get a hold of God's word more and more. I've gotta be with God's family I've got to have a support system. I've got to have a life group that I can go to. And, and maybe you don't do this on week one. I wouldn't recommend this on week one. But maybe after you've been there a while, you say, hey, we smile and we bring potato salad. <laughs> and all, but we're not doing so good. And then maybe somebody opens up and says, that's what I'm talking about. Because that's where we were a year ago. And, and here's what we did, and here's what, how God worked in our hearts and in our lives, and, and, all, and all of a sudden, you don't feel alone in this. And listen, wherever you are, whether it's divorce care, grief share, or a life group, or whatever, there are people to be with in this church. Don't walk this walk alone. All right, don't do it. And if you are married and there are issues, then sit down, pray about it, talk about it, get, get real and discuss it. Because you need to, and, and again, pray more than anything else. There's been times when in our married life, I'll, I'll be praying, I'll say, God, help Rochelle be a better spouse, you know? Lord, just help that woman be crazy about me, you know, can't keep her hands off me, and oh, Lord, just bless, anoint her, Lord, with, with that, and, and, and help her. And you know what? I'll be praying like that, and the Lord will say, mm, no, I want to talk about you. I, I want to talk about you right now. And I'll say, Lord, let's get back on the subject. <laughs> you know. No, I want to talk about you. And I want to talk about what you can change and what you can do. And I know one of the things that I thought when, when Rochelle and I got married is I thought, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> she is dedicated to my personal happiness. <laughs> she lives to make me happy every day. That's, that's her assignment. And here's what I had to realize, and this is what the Lord helped me to realize. No, happiness is a choice. And you can choose you can choose to be happy. And you can choose to serve. 
It's not 50-50. It's 100%. And you know, I've always been a guy that I've tried to keep dating my wife after all this time. And, you know, I would open the door for her and all when we were dating. And I still open the door for her. Uh, I know she can do it. But she didn't have to. Because I'll do it. And so I open every door I can get to and, and all. But then I, I thought about this one morning. I was laying out my vitamins. And I take a bunch of vitamins. And so I'm laying all my vitamins out, putting them in a little, little container thing so I can slip them in my pocket. And whenever I, I eat something, then I can take them. And uh, I saw her container sitting there. And I thought, yep, she needs to fill hers today, too. And then I, I felt like, no, you could do that. You could serve her by taking care of that. And I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm doing mine. It wouldn't be that much extra to lay hers out. And I just started doing that. I, I just started serving her. And listen, just like taking time off now and some things like that, I'm just looking for opportunities to serve her more because here's what I figured out. I'm happier when I'm doing that. It's true. Matter of fact, here's the recipe for misery, and you don't have to be married to do this. You can be single and just Focus on yourself. You'll be miserable. <laughs> it's true. But if you'll begin to look to others and say, who can I serve? And if you're married, first one is your spouse. And just say, oh, I wonder how I could show love to them today. You know what? God's gonna fill you with love and joy and peace and blessings in your life. How many believe that, right? He, he's going to do that in your life. Let's pray. Father, help us today, those of us that are struggling maybe with a lie that the enemy's trying to tell us, and we know he's a liar. So God, whatever the lie is, help us to identify it right now whether we're married or single or whatever state we're in, Lord, we, we don't wanna believe any of the lies of the evil one. And so, Lord, help us to focus on the truth because we know the truth will set us free and we'll be filled with love, joy, peace. All kinds of blessings will come into our lives as a result. Maybe you're here today and you'd say, Craig, I want God's truth to be foremost more than anything else in my life. I, I want to live the life God has for me, following his truth that can set me free. I don't want to believe any of the lies of the enemy. And we live in a culture where there's a lot of lies out there. But today, I declare God's truth over me, my home, my family, my life, my mind. How many are here today? Just raise your hand right now. Just say, yeah, that's me. That's me. I, I declare God's truth over my mind my spirit. Lord, we do that in this place. And anyone here that's believing a lie, that maybe they're, they don't matter, Lord, they do matter, most of all to you. Maybe you're here today, and one of the lies you believed is that God doesn't love you. Or maybe you believe that, you know, he speaks to other people, but he doesn't speak to me. God doesn't care about me, doesn't care about my future, doesn't care about my life. Or, or maybe you have believed a lie that God won't or can't forgive you for something you've done. And I just want to say, that is a lie from the pit. God can and will forgive you if you'll come to him. Here's what he says. He says, I'm knocking on the door. If you'll just open up, I'll come in. I'll come into your life. And if you're here today and you need God to come in and give forgiveness 
and liberation from shame and guilt and give you a new start and a new beginning. That's the God that we serve. It's the God who is and he's here and he's ready to move into your life. If you need God moving in your life like that, if you need to be forgiven today, would you just raise your hand all over this room? Just raise it up. Say, yeah, that's me today. Yeah, yeah. Online, just type the word decided in the chat. We're gonna believe God for you as well. As a matter of fact, let's all pray this prayer, especially those who raised a hand. But come on, church family, let's all pray. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe by his death, he paid for all sin, for all time, and that includes mine. So today I confess Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And as much as I know how, I give my all to you. Thank you for coming in and saving me today and making me a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate those who here and online made a decision for Jesus today. It's so awesome. Listen, on on the uh, screens, they'll put up some words that you can text as a next step, but also here in person, even better than that, is just go across this hallway to a next steps room and somebody will be glad to talk to you about baptism. We have baptism coming up in a few weeks, and that's powerful to follow the Lord in baptism. We'd love to help you to do it. Matter of fact, any next step that we can help you to take in your journey with Jesus, we want to do that. So let us know what we can do, either text it or just walk across the hall. We'll be glad to do that. I'm going to ask our prayer partners to come down. Let's all stand together. I'm going to pray over you before we leave. And um, maybe God stirred something in your heart today. And maybe um, you need to just say, hey, would you pray with me about this? And these folks would love to pray with you or pray for you before you leave today. So let them do that. And uh, don't go it alone. Uh, Let somebody else join you in prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Spirit of the Lord in this place. Thank you for life change. Thank you for how you're moving in so many people. And God, we ask that you'll move through us over these next two weeks to reach somebody, to invite someone so that their life can be forever changed by your amazing grace. Now, Holy Spirit, draw every person that needs prayer down here to the altar to receive the prayer that they need. And God, we thank you for it. Go with each one. Otherwise, in Jesus' name. Amen.